Okay, saying that I was be uh, obsessed with unholy would be an understatement. I'm running around my house going, Mommy, don't know that daddy's at the body shop doing unholy. I can't do it like Sam Smith, but great song. Before becoming the first openly transgender solo artist to earn the top spot in the Billboard Hot 100 chart, well, singer Ken Petrus was born on August 27th, 1992 in the small German town known as Hennef. Located about 40 minutes from Cologne, while well, Petrus' hometown was very heavy on what she likes to call, well, farm vibes, and it boasted a ton of livestock, including cows and horses. In fact, her family's nearest neighbors, they were located more than 10 minutes away while she was growing up. Now, born to an architect for a father and a dance teacher for a mom, well, you could say that music was always an integral part of her life and her household. Now, in the late 90s and early 2000s, well, Kim became obsessed with the Spice Girls, and she fell in love with lip singing to Disney songs alongside two of her older sisters. More than just sing along with her siblings, well, Kim would also occasionally steal clothes from their closet. Now, even though she was assigned the male gender at birth, well, Kim just wanted to look like her sisters. She once explained to In Style, I just wanted to wear pink and it just made me feel happy to wear dresses. And you know, things that I wasn't supposed to be wearing at the time. That was when I was like five, when I was a tiny kid. Now in school, well, Kim, she would wear these outfits under her more traditional male clothing, but eventually her sense of isolation and dysphoria, well, it worsened pushing things in a dangerous direction. In fact, she explained to The Guardian, I was suicidal from really young into my teenage years. There was no medical care locally, so from the age of 10, my parents took me across Germany to find doctors to treat me. They pushed for me to get the help I needed and believe me. Now at the age of 12 years old, well, Kim, she began undergoing hormone therapy and after searching for a very long time, well, the family found a doctor with a connection to a German TV channel. The end result was that Kim's gender affirmation surgery, the world's first ever done on a 16 year old. Now it was captured on camera and it was broadcast all around Germany and uh, well, most of Europe. I always knew it, you know, when I was a little kid, I was always wanting pink dresses, Barbie, everything. So, um, you know, I've never really lived as a boy. I've always wanted to live as a girl, so I really knew exactly who I was. That meant that her entire school wound up catching a front row seat to what she was going through, and it made her life miserable for the next few years. Now, looking back now, well, Kim, she would explain how she felt at the time to The Guardian, where she told them, It was really messed up. I'm still scared from how I grew up being ridiculed on national television. Almost immediately following the operation, well, Kim, she set her sights on shattering the world's preconceived notions of her by focusing on her favorite creative outlet, which, of course, was music. Now, from the age of around 12 and onwards, well, Kim, she began making music in her bedroom, writing songs as a means of an escape, which sometimes felt like the only thing that was, like, really worth waking up for. I love it. Writing songs is my, like, obsession since I'm, like, a kid. Um, I used to watch documentaries about songwriters all the time. Now she wrote song after song, desperate to get better, and she would enlist her sisters to help her film music videos, as well as one of her sister's friends who had a little studio in his attic to record some music. Now, once she had a few songs to her name, well, Kim used MySpace and YouTube to distribute them. Now, you can still find some of her earliest work with titles like Fade Away and Last Forever if you really want to dig deep. Now, at the age of 16, well, Kim, she would sell her first song, a jingle for a laundry detergent advertisement. Then she made another one for telecom company and the following year, well, Kim earned herself a publishing contract at 17 years old. But feeling like her career wasn't progressing how she wanted it to while, while living in Europe, well, Kim made the choice to leave her home continent behind and forge a path for herself in America. In 2011, at the age of just 19 years old, well, Kim Petrus arrived in Los Angeles with only $500 to her name. Now, existing on a diet of Subway at Little Caesars, well, Kim would sleep on a producer friend's couch and started the long process of building up her industry connections. And I think once I moved here, I really started finding people who I felt like you know, I kind of like were my soulmates. A production crew known as the Stereotypes who would later work on the Bruno Mars massive hit, That's What I Like. Well, they were the first to give her a real break by letting Kim use their studio. With their help, she also wound up writing on JoJo's 2013 album, Jumping Trains, which was eventually shelved. Now, three years after arriving stateside, well, Fergie recorded one of Kim's songs and Kim was ecstatic. Now, believing that her hard work was finally gonna pay off, but this too would wind up never seeing the light of day. Still working with Fergie, well, it helped earn Kim her first publishing deal in 2014 with BMG, and it also allowed her to get a work visa and, well, stay in the US legally. 
Now, Kim, she got her first break when a song she co-wrote with Skylar Stecker called That's What's Up found its way onto the 2015 Bratz web series with, uh, well, a reworked name. Then alongside her friend and fellow songwriter, Eric Josephs, well, Kim would continue shopping her songs to labels in the hopes of landing a deal. But still labels, they just didn't seem to understand what she was going for. Now, she explained to BuzzFeed News, a lot of people were like, you write gay club music as if that's a bad thing. That's an honor for me. Starting in 2017, well, all of that would begin to change, and that's when Kim created Bunhead Records. Named after her affinity for the hairdo style, to self-release her own music and enlist Paris Hilton to appear as the fairy godmother, Sugar Mommy, in the music video, I Don't Want It At All. Now to capitalize on that momentum that track it generated, will she drop a couple more singles, both of which would play a part in helping her finally break through. I'm talking Heart To Break and Hillside Boy. Voice. Now those hit songs, they would earn hundreds of millions of streams while being played out on speakers and gyms and LGBTQ clubs all over America. And this kind of helped Kim Petras well become gay famous. Now performing at these venues as well as pride festivals will have helped her earn even more exposure. And when Heart to Break earned a placement in RuPaul's Drag Race, well, the song wound up in the top 40 via the radio. Now Petras would further engage her fan base by releasing her debut album, Clarity, and then follow it up only four months later with her second, the whimsical and Halloween themed project, Turn Off the Light. Throughout all of this, will she continue to evolve as an artist? And just as the world entered into lockdown, while Kim's career, it finally finally broke to the big leagues. Now the pandemic was an eventful time in Kim Petras' life. Now with all the downtime she had on her hands, well she came to the realization that what she really loved to do as an artist was make outrageously out there pop songs. After finally earning her first major label deal with Republic Records in August of 2021, well Kim launched the new era of her career on the MTV stage, where she became the first openly trans artist to perform at the network's award show twice over. Now, after at the September 2021 Video Music Awards, well, she released her new sound with the neo disco track "Future Starts Now," all while wearing a bubblegum dress that made her impossible to miss. Then, two months later, at the MTV Europe Music Awards, she emerged out of a giant coconut while singing her new song titled "Well Coconuts." I mean, really, what else is she gonna call it with a uh, with, with a setup like that? Now that Kim had begun working with Wendy Goldstein, the same woman who helped guide the careers of Ariana Grande and The Weeknd, well, she was emerging from her shell like never before. And in February of 2022, well, she announced the surprise EP titled Slut Pop, and she dropped it the very next day. Now, unfortunately, later that summer, things hit a bit of a snag when what was supposed to become her first major label debut titled Problematique, well, it got leaked online in its entirety. Now, the album, it got scrapped, so Kim, well, she gave her fans permission to listen to it anyway. How it happened? Well, no one's really sure, but thankfully, Kim's career, it would bounce back in a gigantic way with her collaboration alongside Sam Smith, the song, it's titled Unholy. Now, not only would that single hit the number one spot in the UK, the United States, Canada, Australia, Ireland, and New Zealand, well, it would make history by turning Sam Smith into the first ever openly non-binary solo artist to achieve that feat. While Kim, well, she would become the first openly transgender solo artist to do so as well. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Like, I just like, it's been number one globally for 18 days. Like, I wake up every day and it's like just still there and it's like haunting me in the best way. With her name buzzing like it never before, well, Kim, she knew that her next song, it would have to make as big of an impact as her last. So she dug deep into her past to draw upon memories of how religion used to make her feel as a kid for her newest single, If Jesus Was a Rock Star. Even with her recent undeniable successes, the only thought that's ever been at the forefront of Kim's mind is her desire to get better and improve her skill set. Now she explained why this is so important to In Style, where she told them, I want to be on top of my game. I want to keep learning. I think my greatest is probably going to be when I'm an old lady and I'm 70 and I'm fierce and I know exactly who I am. Now at only around 30 years old right now, well, Kim Petras, she sure does have a lot of time between now and then to accomplish that goal. Not to mention a lot more time to continue setting records and shattering boundaries, both of which I have no doubt she'll continue to do for a very long time to come. But as for where Kim Petra's career takes her next, well, I guess you already know what I'm about to say. After all, this show is called Before They're Famous. Thanks for checking out this one, but I do have a question before I leave you guys. If you became the poster child for a new form of surgery in your home country, would you stick around under the spotlight or head to another country for a fresh start? Interesting question. I'm not exactly sure what I would do. Love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. 
I'd probably be the guy to bounce. Like, I'm heading to LA anyway. Let's just go now. Let me know what you think down below. As always, we appreciate everyone who stays to the end. These are very long videos, lots of details in there. But uh, this is a star on the rise, and uh, I got a good feeling about this girl. All right, see you in another video. Boom!